Hello, and welcome to the College Investor Audio Show. We are so glad you're here today. We're going to have some fun talking about the GMAT versus GRE and which test do you need. But before we get to it, just want to invite you to go ahead and subscribe. Also share anything you hear that you like on the College Investor Audio Show with friends and family. We'd greatly appreciate that. Also check out our website, thecollegeinvestor.com. If you want to dive deeper on this subject or any other subject, and there are a ton of resources for you. Again, it's thecollegeinvestor.com. All right, let's get to our topic, shall we? We shall. So welcome to the world of continuing education, by the way. Must be an exciting time for you. More and more students are choosing to pursue graduate studies to further their education and career prospects. Education attainment data from the 2022 U.S. Census shows this a 50% increase from 2011 to 2021 in the number of people aged 25 and over whose highest degree is a master's. Whoa, that's quite an increase. And I commend you for challenging yourself in the same way. You're pretty awesome. But before even applying to your desired graduate school, you'll likely need to take either the Graduate Management Admission Test, GMAT, or the Graduate Record Examination, GRE, to submit along with your admissions packet. So, all right, which one is right for you? So we're going to dive into the details of each of the standardized exam options for you. We'll look at the structure of the exams, the advantages and disadvantages of each, and then consider factors that might help you make the best decision for you. And by the end of this podcast today, you should have a clearer understanding of how to actually proceed on your journey to graduate school. So first, the GMAT. The GMAT was created specifically for MBA programs, and more than 2,400 academic institutions accept GMAT scores for admission. Per the Graduate Management Admission Council, the GMAT exam is designed to test skills that are highly important to business and management programs. It assesses analytical writing and problem-solving abilities, along with the data sufficiency, logic, and critical reasoning skills that are vital to real-world business and management success. That's a direct quote from them, by the way. All right, so we actually have a nice little chart that breaks down how the GMAT is structured, the time limit for each exam section, the question count, and the score ranges for all of them at thecollegeinvestor.com. But in general, the total time limit to take the test is three hours and seven minutes, 80 questions, and the score ranges between 200 and 800. For more information on all of those, we provide a more in-depth review of the GMAT at thecollegeinvestor.com. All right, so scoring. Total GMAT scores range from 200 to 800, as I mentioned, and the Graduate Management Admission Council puts the current average at 582. However, your target school may have an average score that's greater than this. So you're going to want to review your school's website to identify the range of scores they typically accept. But generally speaking, a score of 600 plus puts your application in an optimal position for sure. Next to each of your exam scores will be your GMAT score percentile. That's just another way of comparing your results to other test takers. So percentiles are calculated annually using GMAT scores from the previous three years. So if you see a percentile ranking of 80 next to your quantitative reasoning score, for instance, it just means that you scored better then 80% of those who took the GMAT in the last three years, genius. GMAT at a glance. Let's do this. So it's accepted by most business programs, can be taken online or even at a testing site. The test is administered on a computer. Free score delivery for up to five schools. The cost is $250 online or $275 in person. The total test time I mentioned earlier, yeah, like three and a half hours or so. Limited to five attempts in a 12-month period and scores are good for five whole years. Now, let's move on to the GRE. The GRE is another standardized exam commonly used for entrance to graduate school. It has kind of been around a bit longer than the GMAT. It's administered by a different company, too, and it tests similar skills, critical thinking, reasoning, and even analytical writing. The GRE is, however, known to be accepted by a wider variety of graduate programs, including several business and law schools. General structure, you can dive in deeper on this if you would like. 
at thecollegeinvestor.com. But the total time limit, same as the GMAT at three hours and seven minutes, 80 questions, and the score ranges 260 to 340. All right, scoring. Let's take a look at this for the GRE. For reference, the scaled score for the top 25% of all test takers is 157 in verbal reasoning and 165 in quantitative reasoning. Comparatively, the scaled score for the top 50% of all test takers is 152 in verbal reasoning and 157 in quantitative reasoning. The mean score for verbal reasoning is 152, 157 for quantitative, and the mean score for the analytical writing assessment sits at a 4. Again, when considering your total score, you'll want to know the minimum admission requirements at your desired school just to better understand your baseline. Knowing the mean score of previously admitted applicants will help you determine what score you need to remain competitive during the process. Here's the GRE at a quick glance. It's accepted by most graduate schools regardless of program type, can be taken online or at a testing site, test is on a computer, free score delivery up to four schools, cost is 205 either online or in person, the total test time we mentioned earlier a little over three hours, limited to five attempts in a 12-month period, and scores are good for five years. So, all that said, which one should you choose? Keeping the big picture in mind here for a second, the GMAT and the GRE address the same goal, helping your prospective program evaluate your educational skills and aptitude in comparison to other applicants. There are, however, a few minor differences between the two that you'll want to keep in mind come time to choose. The most notable difference is that the GMAT is most often used for admission to business school, whereas the GRE is widely used for all other graduate programs, from an MFA to a PhD in economics. There are subtle differences in how the exams are structured, the types of questions asked, and total test time, but they test almost the exact same content. Those who have taken both exams do, however, mention that, that the GRE focuses more on textbook math like geometry, while the GMAT emphasizes quantitative logic. I'm taking the GMAT. Similarly, previous test takers point to the GMAT's focus on grammar, whereas the GRE leans more into vocabulary. Again, GMAT kind of works for me there. Both exams utilize a system known as computer adaptive testing, meaning the exam varies the order and difficulty level of the questions you're asked in real time. However, the GMAT is question adaptive while the GRE is section adaptive. Interesting. So what does this mean? The GMAT requires that you answer each question in order without the ability to return to it, where the GRE allows you to answer questions in a section in whatever order works for you. I kind of like that. So it's worth noting, though, that the type of questions found on the GMAT mimic the kind of case analysis you'll do in business school. So Think about what you'll use this exam for besides a supplement to your admissions package. In either case, you could very well use your exam study sessions as preparation for graduate school itself. Overall, the best way to identify which exam is better suited for you is to run through a practice test for each of them. You can access a free GMAT practice test and a free GRE practice test, both of those, inside this article at thecollegeinvestor.com. If you don't want to go that route, though, the alternative is to put some thought into why you're considering graduate school and what you hope to get out of it. Use these prompts to get started. How focused am I during standardized tests? Am I an anxious test taker? How are my math language and reasoning skills? What are my career goals? What resources are available to help me prepare? How much do I value a high score? Here's the takeaway. How well you do on either the GMAT or the GRE only indicates the level of fit between your skills and what was tested. There's not a question of which test is easier. The answer completely depends on your own knowledge and abilities. But if you think through the questions that we talked about, do some digging into both exam options and consider the recommendations listed by your desired program. Yeah, you should be just fine. Unless your program specifically states that they only accept the GMAT or only accept the GRE. Just stick with the one that works for you best. 
and you'll be well on your way to graduate school in no time. And that is our show for today. Thanks so much for being with us again. We're so, so thankful. If you want to share this, please subscribe. Also, check us out on social media. We are pretty much everywhere you are. Just search for The College Investor and you'll probably find us. We'd love to get to know you. Thanks again for stopping by today, and we'll talk to you again real soon.